This has got the fixed guy. We have a Kenmore stove that has a front left burner that is not clicking at all. And I'm going to be, I took off the burner heads, and I'm going to take this uh, quarter inch driver and I'm going to just very carefully remove the two quarter inch screws that are on each burner. These tend to break, so take your time. You might even want to use a little penetrating oil to soak into the threads before you try this. When I did it on these two left burners, each one had one screw break, which is not critical. If both break on a burner, you're in trouble. But just take your time. I used a little bit of tension, and then I would back it off the other way, and then a little bit more tension, and then I would turn, I would tighten it up again, and then loosen it, tighten it, and then sometimes you can just finagle through the corrosion and be able to get the screw out without it breaking. But if you just use tons of pressure right off the bat, it'll break for sure. And again, using some penetrating oil before you do this would be the best, especially if you can let it soak in for a day. So I got them all loose, and now I'll just use my regular driver to spin them out because I want to get this top panel off. If you get the top panel off, you have access to the igniters to change them. You could change the burner pieces underneath. You can change the spark module. You can change the wires that take the electricity from the spark module to the igniter. And it just gives you a lot of access, but sometimes these screws are so corroded that makes it really hard to get in there. I've seen some people pry up the uh, this plate without removing these screws and it ends up bending the tubes that bring gas to the burner so it's not recommended. It's far better if you can get these screws off before you try to lift off this panel. If you do break a couple of screws you can drill out the broken piece and then put new screws in, but it's a pain. So it's really wise to try the penetrating oil. and Just take your time and just gently get these screws to move. And once they're loose and they're moving, then you can zip them out with a, a power driver or can put a little more force on them. So this is Kenmore, but I believe it's made by Whirlpool. So now I'm just zipping them out a little faster because I know they're loose. And once you get them all out, you can just lift this plate off pretty easily. There's two little clips in the front that you have to depress to uh, be able to lift it off. So we get all the screws out. We come in about two inches on the right side here. I'm going to use a screwdriver to press in on that clip to make it release. I'll do the same on the left side. Now we've got the plate off and we can lift it up and get it out of there. This one's pretty rusty. So here's some of the components. Here we have the tube that brings the gas to the burner. I just took the wire off of the igniter. It's just, a, it's just a spade connector, it just slips right off. This is the igniter that wasn't working. I'm just checking its connection to the spark module, which lives right here underneath this plate. And the spark module comes out pretty easily. You can just push in on a couple of tabs. This is the spark module. And I'm just checking its uh, connection for that one wire that goes to that left front igniter that wasn't sparking. So the spark module it turns out was doing fine, the igniter's doing fine, the wire's doing fine, 
but the switch at the burner for that one is broken. So I'm going to actually be replacing the burner switch. But if you ever need to replace the spark module, this is how you would do it. It's pretty easy. And they're pretty, pretty inexpensive. Just push it back into position into its two little clips. I would replace the spark module if you had a condition where you weren't getting any clicking to a certain igniter. When you turn on the switch on any of the four switches on the burner, all of the igniters should click. If you notice that just one of the switches isn't working, <clears throat> then that's a problem with the switch. But if you're getting no power to any of them, no clicking, could be you need a new spark module. So I'm putting this plate back on and I push it down on its clips. I'm going to guide the burner heads and igniters back through the holes just carefully using my fingers to help guide it through and then I'll put the screws back in. It's usually the front burners are the ones that have trouble. With this unit the um, front left burner igniter switch right behind the burner knob it just wore out because it gets used all the time and it's pretty easy to replace that one still doesn't have any effect but <clears throat> when you turn on the the burner to the right, then all the igniters click. So I know that the igniter is good, I know the spark module is good, but I know that it's a switch in this case. And now I'm just going to clean with a wire brush the top of that burner, and then I'll clean the burner head and all the metal parts that come in contact with it and then that allows for a stronger spark. So if you have a situation where your burner lights and then it just keeps clicking even though it's lit, I'd recommend cleaning these burner pieces really well with a wire brush. And that creates a really good electrical connection and that can then tell the spark module that you do in fact have a lit burner. If it's a corroded connection, if there's rust and there's dirt then sometimes the spark module does not get the signal that it's lit and it'll just keep clicking. But almost always when you clean these parts really well and then put them back together then it works fine. So we're just getting all these pieces really clean, getting everything free of rust and corrosion and Sometimes you get like dried uh, milk that's spilled <clears throat> and then creates like a white powder that messes everything up. All right, so we're getting this really clean, put all the pieces back together. Yeah, still no effect. We ended up getting a good spark though when we used the other burner controllers that they made all of them spark and this front left burner actually sparked really well. So again, it's just the, the switch is messed up. I'm going to open up the broiler and then I'm going to get a picture of the model number. This is usually where the model number is located on most stoves is on the frame behind the broiler uh, drawer. And I'm going to use that to order the new um, ignition switches. They come as a set of four, and they're actually pretty cheap, pretty easy, easy to replace. 
But I hope this video has helped to understand how you can take the stove apart and also how you can get to the spark module. So thanks so much for watching and please subscribe to our channel when you get a chance. Thanks a lot.